Thanks, David. Yeah, thank you. Really Hello, everyone. Um, so this talk is all about writing plugins. It's never been easier. So if you want to write a plugin and don't know how to start, or if you just want to know how plugins are written because you use so many of them, this talk is for you. So I am uh, David Kunz. Originally, I'm a, I'm a physicist, but now I work at, as a software architect at SAP. Uh, maybe you know me from YouTube as Stefan Duty, and I'm also on GitHub. So let's get started. So this is going to be a live demo because I don't like slides. So and uh, the first thing you should first thing you should do if you want to write plugins is uh, to create a Lua function. So let's do this function to do. Let's just print something for now. So this is my init.lua file, and Neovim doesn't know anything about that now. So I have to source it, and now it's available to Neovim. Now, to invoke this function, I can just write Lua to do. And you can see the result is printed at the bottom. So it's as simple as that. So the first lecture is, sorry, I have to go back to my slides. Where are my slides? Here. So the first lecture is, um, to create a function, just write this, source the file, and then you can call it. All right. Now, it's a little bit tedious to always write Lua to do. Um, maybe you want to have other invocation mechanisms to, to invoke your function. So the next thing you can do is you can create an auto command, for example. So you can write vim API and then create auto, uh, uh, sorry, a user command, user command to do. And now you can just reference this function here and provide an empty options table. So let's sort it again. And now we can just write to do. You don't need this to anymore. And it works. Sometimes you want to run the code when something happens and not manually invoking it. Uh, so what you can do is you can use auto commands. So you can write vim API and then uh, create auto command. And now you need to provide an event whenever your function needs to be uh, invoked. For example, you can use cursor hold. And as a callback, you can just provide the to-do function. Now let's source this file again and see how it works. So now whenever my cursor stays at some place for a little time, you can see that it's printed at the bottom. You can only see it once because it gets overwritten. But you can see all messages by writing messages. And you can see here are a few things. And the last thing, so let's get rid of that maybe because otherwise it uh, it bugs me. So, and the last thing which you already know, hopefully, is key maps. You can write vim key map set, for example, in normal mode for leader. Let's say you. You can also invoke this function. You can just reference it here, and that's it. Let's source it again. And now if I press leader U, you can see it's printed. So all that is good. So to summarize, and now I have to go back to the slides, you have uh, various possibilities to trigger your building block, your um, Lua function. First is nvim create user command. Um, then nvim create auto command to invoke it automatically when some event happens. And the last thing which you surely do all over your place in your configs is uh, set a key map and just invoke that function. And in all these cases, you can just reference uh, this Lua function. Now, the next question would be, now that you've written such a function, how would you actually ship it to other people? Right? You want to have a plugin which other people can install. So let's get rid of this, and let's see how that works. You don't need much for it. Uh, you need actually only an empty directory. And then in this empty directory, you, you create a Lua directory. And in this Lua directory, you create a file with the name of your plugin. Let's call it neovimconf. And um, this is a Lua file. And whatever you return in this file will be accessible to the users of your plugin. So let's just create an empty Lua table. So this is, I would say, common convention. And we return it at the end. And whatever you, you know, put in this Lua table uh, will be accessible. So let's just say, OK, we have here this Lua function. And we just print hello neovimconf. All right, and um, I should write function correctly. And that's basically it. Now, if you would upload that to GitHub and other people would use a package manager, like for example, Packer, 
they can already require NeoVimConf and call this to-do function. It's really easy. Now, for local development, you don't want to go through this uh, package manager stuff. Um, you want to set, you want to add this directory directory to your runtime path, and then you can also require it. So, for local development, what you can do is you can start NeoVim with the command set runtime path plus equals dot dot stats for the current directory plus minus plus, uh, plus equal means you add this to your to your runtime path, and then once you do that, you have the option to just say require neovimconf dot to do, and you can see it works. Now, if you change that text and execute the same thing again, you will see that the previous result is printed because when you call require in Lua, the the result is cached, so uh, it's only loaded once. That's bad if you want to develop it. Um, so. One trick one, one can do is um, one can just create a, a user command. You now know how it's done. So you can say nvim, uh, and, uh, vim API nvim create user command. Let's call it test. We provide some function here. And in this function, we have to clear the cache of this uh, plugin. So we can just say um, uh, package loaded. And now the package name, which is neovimconf equals to nil. So that's basically cleaning the cache. And now we can require it again, require neovimconf, and we can also start this to-do function. All right, let's clean that up a bit. Now we source it, and now if I run test, you can see that uh, whenever I uh, change it again and I run test, I have this quick feedback loop. All right, so that is uh, the second part, what you have to remember. One, to create a module, you need to create a file in a Lua folder with a name of your plugin.lua. Convention is you create a local table, plug anything in it, return it, and you can already ship it. For local development, you add it to your runtime path, and then you will be able to require it and call you know, the stuff which you attach to it. All right. Now, this function is pretty boring. It just prints something. So let's do something more advanced. Um, so usually when you're, when you're coding, you have a lot of to-do comments, uh, right? And uh, so when, when I develop and I know that I have to do something at some place, but I don't have the time to do it, I just write a to-do comment and never do it again, right? <laughs> but sometimes it makes sense to do it. So it would be great if there would be a plugin to scan your current buffer for all to-do comments and uh, populate a quick fix list with it. So you can do that kind of already just by writing vim grab, and then you also have a, a quick fix list with all to-do comments. But as you can see, it also searches for things which are not comments, for example, this to-do function. So usually it's totally fine to have this, but I also want to demonstrate a more advanced feature of NeoVim, uh, which you can utilize when writing plugins, and that is TreeSitter. So TreeSitter is a mechanism which lets you parse the source code uh, into an abstract syntax tree, and then you can make use of this abstract syntax tree. So there's this nice little um, plugin called TreeSitter Playground, which lets you in inspect such a syntax tree. So in this case, for example, um, you can see if I hover over this tree on the right, you can see that on the left, the stuff is highlighted, and you can see these comment nodes. And these are exactly these nodes which I want to query, right? The, this is the thing I want to search for to do comments. It also allows you to write some queries. For example, to get all comments, you can capture all comment nodes into a comment capture. And now if I hover my cursor over this capture, you can see that all nodes are correctly highlighted, right? And I'm not interested in all comments. I'm only interested in the comments which have a to-do in them. So I can also do the following. I can match my capture comment for the string to-do. All right. And now if I hover over this capture um, again, um, it, there's a uh, thing missing. Now, if I, if I hover over it again, you can see that only to-do comments are highlighted. And that's exactly what I want. So let me just comment this query string and just save it for a second in this uh, uh, variable here. And get rid of the stuff. So now we have a query string, which is able, you know, using TreeSitter to get all my nodes. Now I have to use 
the appropriate APIs of TreeSetter. And if you're unsure how it works, you can always consult the help by writing call on help and then TreeSetter. And you get a nice little introduction of uh, TreeSetter, which you can read, which I'm not going to do in front of you because I know the API already. And now you can make use of TreeSetter. So let's do this. I create a, I, I get my parser first. So for this, I require nvim treesitter.parsers. Get parser. And once I have my parser, I can also um, parse my query string into a so-called query. So I can say vim treesitter query parse query. And now I need to provide the language, which I get from my parser and my query string, which I constructed before. And one, one tip is if you're unsure if it works, you should try it out and print it. That's, uh, that's a, a nice trick to see if it works. And that's this um, uh, pretty print function, which you can use. You can just plug in anything and, uh, and then it prints it. So let's see if that works. And yeah, it works. So now we have our query. And with that query, we can now iterate over all captures uh, which it found in this buffer. So we can say for node in query, sorry, uh, it's vim, uh, no, it's query, data captures. And here I have to provide the, the uh, root node. So from my tree, my tree I get using the parser parse command, and it's the first element. And now I can plug that in. So it's my root of the tree. And I want to use the current buffer. And now I can loop over it. And let's just see if it works. So I get the text using vim tree setter. Uh, sorry, yeah, yes, vim tree setter query get node text of my uh, node for the current buffer. Uh, let's see if that works. So I print text and I run test. No, nope, there's no parser. Um, node text, it should be called. Let's try it again. Uh, parser, parser, parser. Yes, uh, parser, parse. It's called parse. You can see everybody makes errors, but you can you can see where the error comes from and you can fix it. So now it works. Now, if I run test, you can see that I get all my to-do comments. That's exactly what I want. And now I want to use this information to populate a quick fix list. So let's create a, an empty Lua table called QF list. And whenever I iterate over these nodes, I want to insert it into this list. And I use table insert, quick fix list. And here I have to provide the necessary information for my quick fix list. Um, so there's also help, uh, for example, set QF list. And it tells you exactly what you need to provide, the buff number, the line column, the uh, line number, the column, and so on. So I, I know that already. So I just write buff number equals to vim API and vim get current. Uh, buff. My text is my text, which I already have. And now I also need my line number and my column, which I don't know yet. But there's also this API from this node, which, which, I, which I have to get the line number and the column. And I can just say um, node uh, range. All right. There's one little nitpick. I have to add plus one because why not? Uh, the API sometimes are a bit weird, but uh, you, you get used to it. So you can just try it out, see if it works, and then you would see, ah, there's an offset, and then you can fix it. Now we have our quick fix list. Now we just have to set it using vim fn set qf list, and we provide it here. And we also automatically want to open it. So we can write vim command op uh, c open. OK, let's test it. And you can see it works. I get a quick fix list with all my to-do comments. So that's perfect. Um, note that we constructed this query string for all programming languages. And usually, there are common nodes. Not all of them have that. And for some languages uh, who don't have that, this uh, command would cause an exception. And error handling in Lua works like that. You can, If, if something throws an exception, you can wrap it in a p call and use the function as a first parameter then you don't get the result, but you get an OK result. And if it's not OK, then you can just return it. And then you don't bother your users. All right, and now our plugin is ready. So we can upload it to GitHub. Um, 
I always recommend to add a license file to make sure that uh, you have the proper license so people can use it and don't have to worry. And then you're good to go. That's also one thing I want to show you because um, I know that at the beginning, all these APIs and how they work is a little bit tedious and uh, also frustrating a bit. Um, but there's a tool which you can use to actually develop plugins. And that is called uh, Jet uh, GPT. So let's open my slides again. So this is ChatGPT as a language model, and let's just write it. Uh, create a NeoVim plugin using the Lua programming language to populate and open a quick fix list with all true comments of the current buffer. Now you can send it to ChatGPA. It will take maybe 10 seconds if the server is not loaded too much. And I can hopefully assure you <laughs> that it will blow your mind. Let's see. Um, so ChatGPT is a language model. It basically scanned the whole internet for information. And um, it's optimized for this you know, chat style interaction. So you can uh, give it uh, questions or things or commands, and it will just try to execute it. So let's just wait a little bit if it doesn't work, because sometimes the servers are overloaded. I have a backup video. So let's just see. And I've done it a few times. So sometimes the results are totally garbage and uh, contain a lot of errors. Or sometimes it uses APIs which do not exist. But sometimes it also actually does work. And it's kind of remarkable. So let's wait for five more seconds. If not, I'm going to play the video. Or maybe try again once. Because it's always nicer to see it live. And it can all kind can do all kinds of stuff, not just creating code, but it can also create poems or uh, everything which is text based. It can create. You can also give it a bunch of text and say improve this text, and it will improve this text. It, it's quite remarkable. So let's give it one more try. If not, I'm going to play the video. Servers seem to be a bit overloaded. All right, let's let's uh, play the video. I think that's uh, that's easier. So here's the video which I did before. I did the exact same thing. I entered the exact same prompt. That's uh, it, it takes always a few seconds, and then uh, it will come up with uh, the result. Here's the result. So it tells you how, how to do it. It gives you explanation of the code. It shows you the code, how to invoke your plugin, and everything. And you can see that it even uses co some conventions, for example, creating this empty Lua table, this M table, which re returns at the end. And in the end, it uh, just implements the to-do list function. In this case, it goes over all the buffer lines. It does it, it, does it a little bit differently that, than I did. Um, it, uh, it, it loops over the lines, sees if the string matches a do-do comment, and, and, and plugs it in the uh, quick fix list and shows the quick fix list. It's not using tree setter, so it's not as nice as my plugin, but it's a great starting point. And you can see it's never been easier to write plugins using NeoVim. And with that, I thank you very much for your attention. That was awesome. That was excellent. There we should be. A lot of clappies going on in the Twitch chat. Thank you. A lot of scared developers. A lot of scared developers. <laughs> they can feel their abilities to write tree sitter plugins slowly slipping from their hands. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. So have you made that into a YouTube video? Not yet, but I'm planning to do it. Okay. Hey, good. We've been linking your YouTube in the chat. So yep. uh, everyone Thanks. go follow Dev on Duty on YouTube. Yep. Bang speaker in chat, and you'll see that uh, it'll say right away, or the service is down. We're not really sure. It turns out there's a lot of services that are currently down. Yeah, so it's not just us. Yeah, it's not just us. We're low quality because of the internet today. <laughs> Smart. That was very good. How did you come up with that idea? 
Uh, using ChatGPT for uh, plugin development? Yeah. Yeah. That's actually, it's kind of a funny story. So I, um, I saw about ChatGPT and I just, you know, plugged in the, the basic stuff, which people usually do, write a poem about cats or yeah. something. <laughs> and um, so at, at my at my current day job, I'm working on the uh, SAP cloud application programming model. And it's it's not open source, uh, but it has a lot of documentation and examples out there on the internet. And I was just curious if it works. And so I just wrote, hey, uh, write in this uh, programming framework, write a simple application, basically. And it worked. And it just blew my... I even wrote a blog post about it. It just blew my mind. And then I was like, if it manages to create, you know, an application for my day work, it surely can manage to create a simple plugin. So I just tried it out and it worked and it just blew my mind. <laughs> it's, it's just fantastic. Um, it contains a lot of errors often when you, when you create such code and it uses sometimes APIs, which don't exist, but should exist because they're actually good APIs. But <laughs> it, it really gives you a really nice um, first first step, right? You can also refine it. So if you create something and it's wrong, you just say, hey, this API doesn't exist. And then it corrects itself and you get the, the final result. It, it's just crazy. So if you want to create a plugin, you have this idea of a nice plugin, just just type it in, see what comes out and maybe it makes sense and you can uh, you know work upon it. Yeah. And you by the way, um, the result is there. Do you see, still see my screen? Because then I can oh. I can show you what I just got. So it took a while. Um, yep, everyone can see it now. Okay, great. So this is the result which I just got. It exact it tells you exactly what you have to do. You know that you can put it in this Lua directory and do the thing with a runtime path, and you can here create this auto command. Uh, here's your list to dos function where you can create this to dos table. Um, also with this uh, set QF list with the to dos, and it basically also does the same thing as before. It gets the lines, loops over it, matches for to dos, inserts it in the table. Pretty similar to what I've just did, but just without tree setter. And yeah, show, shows you exactly what to do. It, it's just it, mind blowing. It, it really is mind blowing. It did get it wrong though. It, it, yeah, it's called, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there are some there are some errors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is well, call <laughs> function a real function, or did that one just get made up? I don't know, but the main problem it has for sure is that the the iteration on for loops is wrong. It thought it was writing JavaScript or something. Yes, yes. <laughs> that exactly. doesn't work. That doesn't work. But hey, saved. Saved. Woo! Okay, everybody, we got a job this year. We got a job yeah. this year. So now we. I just I just told it that the iteration is wrong, and you and he said, yeah, you're correct. It's actually wrong. Let's. Do oh it no! Oh no! <laughs> yeah. Fix yourself. <laughs> <laughs> can you ask it if it uh can you tell it that it forgot to use tree sitter yeah oh, nice. uh, use tree sitter oh, it's uh tree sitter instead so it it does it it uses tree sitter then so it, it also knows about tree sitter it knows that it's a library to pass source code um but what i found out is it, it uses apis which usually don't exist but let's see what what comes out uh, i'm curious so it requires tree sitter I think okay, that's and JavaScript. Real? Oh God, no! <laughs> not like no, it's not quite right. <laughs> so that's already bad. You can see it, it. It doesn't make sense, but it's it's kind <laughs> of, you know, it also um, constructs a query which doesn't make sense. So this is not a, a right query. Um, so it will oh not work. But, but but it's really scary how close it is, right? So now it's I could, right for shape. example, tell it it's not a real query. Improve yep. it, and it will improve, and so on. But it, it's just it's just crazy. Yeah.